All right, geometry students, let's look at unit two, lesson two, congruent parts, part two. So we have three lesson goals. I can identify corresponding parts from a congruent statement. So again, we have congruent shapes. With the congruent statement, the statement will tell us which parts match up together. So we wanna be able to identify that without always looking at the picture. I can use rigid transformations to explain why figures are congruent. So if you have a congruent statement, you should be able to take one figure and move it onto the other using some rigid transformations to show that they overlap onto each other perfectly. I can write a congruent statement. So once you know what the congruent parts are or you have some information, you should be able to write a congruent statement that this shape is congruent to this one and ordering all the letters in order so that the congruent parts match up. We still have the same vocabulary word, corresponding, which we're typically focusing on the parts. So it's matching up the angles that are congruent to the other angles, the sides that are congruent to the other sides, and so on. All right, so for this one, each pair of figures is congruent. So this triangle and this triangle are congruent. Decide whether each congruent statement is true or false. So just by using your visual and looking at it, is this how you would match up the figures? So for example, you've got A, B, C triangle here. Does it match up with F to E to D in that order? That's what you're looking at. So the order really matters. Is that the order you would put them? Now, just because it's flipped around or something, you've got to look at it, maybe turn um, the picture a little bit, draw your own, kind of map it out for you. Bring that tomorrow with your statements of true and false, and make sure you have an explanation as to why you chose what you did, and that's going to start our discussion tomorrow. Thanks.